Black Grimoire Productions presents Trinity Bridge, First Night, Episode 1 by Brandon Hess. Narrated by Brandon Hess. With performances by Kelly Banach as Anita, Christina Nichols as Esther, and Tiffany Witcher as Marsha. One. KC Crank's 24-hour auto repair shop wasn't the most popular or successful body shop in the city of Chicago, or even the most legitimate, but it was always open, and it took all clients and all vehicles of all origins, no questions asked. Was it illegal and or unethical? Probably, but one does what one must to make a living. Another thing that made it stand out amidst its competition, it was staffed entirely by women. From the grease monkeys to the management, this was a business where a woman could screw customers and make a buck without having to remove a single piece of clothing. Working the shop's graveyard shift that night was Marsha, the self-proclaimed best damn mechanic in Chicago, Anita, the timid but diligent night secretary, and Esther, the owner and proprietor of Casey Cranks. Anita sat behind a desk in the front office of the building, pretending to work at her computer despite having finished most of her immediate duties hours ago. Her attention was instead focused on the shiny midnight blue SUV in the middle of the garage and the woman working on its engine, Marsha. She watched with captivated eyes as Marsha toiled and tinkered with the metal behemoth before coming up for a breather. As Marsha wiped the sweat and oil off her brow with a damp rag, Anita couldn't help but feel herself get a little sweaty at the sight of Marsha's strong, muscular body glistening with perspiration in the warm lights of the garage. She then heard the front door open, however, and as she turned to see who had entered, she really began to sweat. Not out of desire, but anxiety, as she saw her boss, Esther, returning from her lunch break. What's with the face, kiddo? Esther asked with a smirk, a lit cigarette still smoldering in her teeth. You looking at porn on that thing? Am I interrupting something? Esther! Please, it's not what you think. Anita cried back in desperation as Esther approached her. Look, kid. We all got needs. I get it. Heck, I may be past my prime, but even I still rub one out on occasion. Miss Esther! But don't be doing that on company time. Or if you really gotta, at least have the decency to do it in the bathroom. But I wasn't- Anyways. I'm heading back to my office for a bite to eat and a wink of sleep. If anyone comes by asking for me in the next hour or so, tell them I'm out. Got it? Y yes, Miss Esther. Just Esther. We've been over this. Sorry, Miss Esther. Uh, oops. I swear to God. You're lucky you're adorable, you know that? Um, thank you? Anyways, my food's getting cold, so I'm off. Make sure you wash your hands before you touch that keyboard again, okay? Esther said with a smarmy smile as she passed through the doorway leading into the garage and letting out a puff of smoke from her cigarette. Anita just sat in silent surrender after her superior's pseudo-scolding and slowly turned to the window, looking into the garage, and tried to take her mind off of what had happened by admiring her co-worker some more. Oh, Marcia. Anita said, choking back a whimper. I wish... I could be strong like you. Unable to hold back her anxiety any longer, Anita collapsed into her seat and began to cry. Marsha had been working tirelessly to accomplish the challenge thrust upon her this evening, getting this SUV up and running again. At first, it seemed like a simple engine repair job, child's play to a mechanic of her caliber. However, as she toiled and struggled to get the engine to stop smoking, let alone run properly, it became very apparent that the engine was completely and utterly beyond repair. 
It was only a slight blow to her pride, though. After all, it doesn't matter how good you are at a job, you can't bring back the dead. So, instead of bearing the shameful blight of a job that was too much for her, the parameters of said job had simply shifted from repair to replacement. Again, child's play, right? Well, it turns out the engine was particularly old and rather rare in today's market and impractical in usage, hence why it broke down to begin with. Despite this, however, the owner of the vehicle insisted that the engine be replaced with another working engine exactly like the original. It was so they could preserve the sense of authenticity about the vehicle or some shit. It made neither any sense nor any difference to Marsha, especially when they mentioned that they were willing and able to pay any price so long as the engine was replaced the way they wanted since whenever money isn't an object, all Esther can see is dollar signs. Marsha wasn't entirely sure if that qualified as irony. So now Marsha was stuck trying to fix up an old, rare car's old, rare, obsolete engine with a new, old, rare, obsolete, and expensive engine just to get a, hopefully, fat check off it from her boss. It wasn't an easy problem to solve, but the thing that truly made Marsha declare herself the greatest mechanic in Chicago was that she had a secret weapon for occasions such as these. A tool that no other mechanic in the world had. Anita. Where Marsha was a master under the hood, Anita was a genius at the keyboard, though she would never believe it herself. Despite her humble nature, though, where other mechanics might struggle for days or even months trying to figure out where to get which parts from whom for the best price for a job, Anita's nimble fingers and quick mind could get the job done in roughly an evening, and this job was no exception as she managed to find some hoarder on Craigslist who owned a warehouse in the city, which just happened to have the engine Marsha needed to finish the job, and for almost 75% less than market price in stable working condition the night after she put her on the search. And, as an added bonus, Anita was cute as a button with a smiling puppy dog on it. And all she seemed to ask in return was steady pay and to watch Marsha work through the garage window. Marsha didn't even mind the distant onlooker. If anything, it was something of an odd ego boost to her, making her feel like a master artisan, working her craft like a mechanical goddess as she restored and mended these metal masses to a state of near perfection. That, and she was comforted by the company, distant as it was. So that night, when she saw Anita through the window, sitting at her desk, looking ashamed and dejected, and her boss entering the garage with a greasy fast food bag in hand, and the smile that should be on Anita plastered across her own face instead. She decided to try and fix the fractured spirit of her distant companion. What did you say to her, you old bitch? Marsha asked impatiently as she swiftly made her way over to her boss. Esther looked over at the approaching angry Latina, caught somewhat off guard by her biting words. Excuse me? Esther replied, astonished. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You're picking on Anita again. I'm sorry. Did you forget the part where I'm your fucking boss? Whoop de shit, old bitch. Go ahead and fire me. See what happens to all your regulars. Spoiler alert, they are my regulars. Uh-huh, Esther said, rolling her eyes. I just don't see the need for such disrespect. Seriously? You're talking about uncalled for disrespect after you walked away from your receptionist leaving her trembling like a sad puppy? Oh, for fuck's sake. That wasn't even anything. That was just a bit of ribbing. You know she has anxiety. She's probably thinking you hate her or is some big trouble or something. Oh, so what? Am I supposed to just whip him out and invite her to suckle every time I crack a joke because she's got paper-thin skin and no sense of humor? You're unfucking believable you know that? The only thing I know I am right now is hungry. And I also happen to know what you are, Guerrero. Not working. Now shut up and get back to fixing that car. My fries are getting cold. Esther replied with finality as she forced her way past Marsha and into her office, shutting the door behind her without another word. Marsha then cursed at her boss under her breath before going to the lobby to comfort Anita. As she heard the door open, Anita instinctively turned to face her visitor. I'm working! I'm working! I promise I'm working! Anita yelped, fearing another stinging reprimand. She was simultaneously relieved and alarmed to see Marsha step through the doorway. It's okay, Chica. You're not in trouble. It's only me. 
All Anita could do was sit silently and blush at the woman she admired with every fiber of her being. Marsha stood a whopping seven feet tall, with gorgeous, radiant amber eyes and long, thick, wavy black hair, wrapped in a red bandana to keep it out of the way as she worked. Her skin was a striking light brown, and her toned, fit, muscular body, covered in a gray Casey Cranks jumpsuit, stained with oil and grease and other mechanical residue. Despite her blue-collar attire, Marsha was like a living angel to Anita's perception. While she was but a flawed and unworthy human being, undeserving of the attention, let alone companionship of a bombshell like her. Anita was a mere 5'2", with gaunt, mousy features, medium-length blonde hair, and large, round-rimmed glasses that magnified her, as she would describe them, ugly, shit-colored brown eyes. She wore a plain white t-shirt with a pair of blue jeans and a pink cardigan she hand-knit herself. Anita was incredibly soft-spoken and shy with crippling social anxiety, which made the simple and necessary task of basic human conversation quite the ordeal for her. In fact, the only reason she even landed the job at Casey Cranks as the receptionist was because of two reasons. One, Esther felt sorry for the poor girl, and two, what she lacked in social prowess she made up for in dexterity and technological aptitude. Though she would never believe it herself, Anita was something of a computer wizard which was beneficial to Esther who neither had the patience nor the interest in figuring out these confounded computer machines. So, while Anita handled all the necessary number crunching and data entry and whatnot, she only had to tell customers, the manager is in her office in the garage, she will see you shortly. And then Esther would take care of the rest most of the time. Of course, there was always the more than occasional customer who was there not so much to get a tune-up, but rather to uh, inspect the staff, as it were. For persistent pests such as these, Anita felt blessed to have Marsha working her shift as well. Marsha always knew how to deal with unprofessional behavior, sometimes in ways that were much to Esther's chagrin. That is to say, it's not that Esther didn't think the perverted fuckers didn't deserve the monkey wrench induced broken noses and black eyes. However, Marsha's fiery brand of selflessness could easily come back to bite the company or her employees in the ass, and making sure it didn't was still more work on her behalf. Sometimes it was nothing, but other times favors had to be called, strings needed to be pulled, and new resources and favors had to be acquired to replace them. After all, it was only a matter of time before it happened again. All in all, in spite of the occasional night of excitement and wounding remarks from her boss, Anita wouldn't trade her job for anything, so long as she could work beside Marsha, even if they were a room apart most of the time. Anita? You in there, girl? Anita finally managed to snap out of her stupor and desperately searched for the words to reply to Marsha. Well, what Oh, uh, y yeah, uh, I... Yes, I'm here with you. She may do with the little she managed to find. Luckily, Marsha smiled and laughed in response. <laughs> Good to hear that old bitch didn't completely destroy you. Cause if she did, I have destroyed her even worse. Marsha said, pounding her fist into her palm and cracking her knuckles. Anita simply smiled and tried to muster up whatever confidence she could find in herself to actually talk to Marsha, and not come off as the useless, disposable mouse she knew she was deep down inside. Oh, it's okay. Really, I mean- Bullshit! I saw the way you looked at her as she left and she was freaking smiling about it! Inflicting that kind of misery on a person is not okay! And in that moment, any confidence Anita had promptly crumbled as she learned that Marsha had seen her for who she truly was. A spineless, meek little coward, undeserving of any respect from anyone. She hung her head down, letting her bangs droop over her eyes to hide the tears which began to form. She curled up into her knees to soak them up as she begged for Marsha's pardon. I'm... I'm sorry. I... I know. I should have been stronger. I shouldn't have such thin skin. I'm just too sensitive. I'm not strong and fearless like you, Marsha. Marsha then knelt down beside the crying Anita, embraced her, and began stroking her hair. Shh, 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 Chica. Don't say those things. It's not your fault, I promise. M marsha You didn't do anything wrong, Anita. If anyone needs to apologize, it's Esther. 
She needs to realize just because she thinks her little jabs are hilarious doesn't mean the people she's jabbing at do. She's supposed to be your boss, and she's acting like a fucking bully to you. That's a little fucked up if you ask me. Thank you, Marsha. Once again, tears began to well up in Anita's eyes, but this time they were not from sadness, but relief that Marsha thought no less of her. However, the embrace and hair-stroking were a nice surprise, too. Marsha released Anita and pulled back to look at her co-worker and see if she made the right call. The thank you was a good sign, but there was still shakiness in her voice and tears in her eyes. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm gonna be fine. Hey, Anita. Y- yes Marsha? When I hugged you, was that weird? N- no, no. I, uh, I mean, it actually helped. <laughs> okay, good. Marsha exclaimed, heaving a hefty sigh of relief. What about... The hair part? Uh, I, uh, I didn't mind. Honest. Anita replied with a shy smile and an intense blush. Well, I think I might know something else that might help. Oh, really? Yeah, what do you say we go get some shitty, greasy as fuck fast food after we work and just indulge? It's my cheat day, and I'll feel more comfortable if I had someone I like eating that shit with me. Anita's face dropped. Her mind was absolutely racing. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. Did she just fucking ask her out? What? Why? How? What? Her blush intensified even more, making her face resemble a blonde-haired cherry. Sorry, was that too forward? I mean, I don't... uh, I'm not trying to... Yes! I mean, no. I mean, yes. I mean, I want to eat shit with you. I mean, eat out with you. After work! Yes! Please! Thank you! The two sat in silence for several minutes, just staring at each other, after quite possibly the most awkward after-work planning between co-workers ever, before both finally just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I'll see you then. See you then. Marsha then stood up and began walking back to the garage. M- M- Marsha? Yeah? Thank you. No worries, Chica. Us girls gotta stick together. Marsha said with a smile before departing. When the door closed behind her, Anita then collapsed headfirst onto her keyboard in a bashful stupor, mumbling nonsense to herself happily. To Marsha? I mean, not like that, but if it ever comes up... Maybe I, uh, I, I did it. <sighs> this has been a Black Grimoire production. Music for this production was provided by bensound.com and tabletopaudio.com. Sound effects for this production were provided by freesound.com. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this production, be sure to follow Black Grimoire on SoundCloud and Tumblr, and like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content.